Well, we started out in the episode, I had in my mind this fat chap sitting in a hut somewhere, digging his nose and calling me <laughs> randomly, right? Uh, so, quite close. Actually, Except yeah. the fat chap had like 20 yeah. other fat chaps with him, right? Singapore is facing a growing crisis. Scams involving Chinese official impersonations rose by 60% last year, cheating Singaporeans of $13 million. Hello. I've received these phone calls multiple times and I've attempted to engage them just so that I could scold them. Like I told one of them, you think I'm stupid or what, right? I don't think we've actually really explored who's behind the phone call. Initially, the idea was, oh, we just take the numbers that we get from these phone scammers and then we just get someone to trace where they, they come from. It was a very futile attempt because these numbers aren't even real um, because they use a, a call spoofing technology and they all come from overseas so there's no way you can even track where these numbers were coming from so then it was a bit of like a, a dead end. The syndicates they are transnational and very well organized. So the next thing I, I did was when I started to find out okay so where do you think that these phone calls would come from initially we thought it must be China. 讲的就是十个安西九个片,还有一个在锻炼 So there's a little township in Anxi province It's called the, the hometown of the scammers 你看这个蓝色的这个东西它上面写的就是长康乡诈骗前科人员就是这个孙子的 We actually arrived in China on the third day of the Chinese New Year uh, because everyone would be home in the village We would be able to catch and see a lot more things happening the roads were congested with luxurious cars who were coming home to visit their relatives. The buildings were quite amazing. You get your regular villages and then you get these mansions. I think our motto on the ground, particularly in China, was in and out. We had to get our stuff really quick. Because it was a village, you're going to be spotted quite easily. Now I would really like to speak to a phone scammer. Can you help me? Our guys in China basically went six months ahead of us to knock on every door. We finally found one guy who said that I could help you and I know someone who is a scammer. I remember it was that moment in the hotel room when everybody was like, did you hear what he just said? Okay, we got to get this before he changes his mind, right? He was really a small-time scammer. He got caught really quickly. I think four weeks into the job, he got caught. When we found out from our China team that actually it was Taiwan that actually taught them how to scam, that was to me kind of a, a revelation. And then we went a bit further and, and we talked to the Taiwanese authorities. Of course, they were the ones that told us they, these are the guys that are basically making you know 70% of the money, and the ones that are actually doing the, the phone call are kind of like small fries. My sense is that the Taiwanese investigators are way ahead of the game. The types of scams that we are seeing in Singapore, Taiwan has been there, done that. They shared with us pictures from a, a raid that they conducted. It was a scam school. Apparently, the Taiwanese were training a group of Thai people so that they could scam the Thai people in their own mother tongue. My jaw dropped because when I looked at the pictures, it was like a whiteboard, they had slogans, it was like a sales meeting. It was like, are you going to get rich? I'm going to get rich. Are you going to scam? We are going to scam. So it's extremely organized, uh, which wasn't what I had expected. The calls may not be as random as we thought. They did know a little bit of information about the Singapore victim. When we did the interview, we were kind of like, no way, there's no way that they know about you. I think that was what really got her. From 1909 to we found a to The point is, these are businesses and they will operate where the costs are low. We were filming at the warehouse where the raid had happened. And we also had a drone pilot. He had some local approach him and kind of ask him like, oh, what are you doing here? We also noticed that there was like a black SUV that sort of pulled up um, in front of where the warehouse was. A woman got out. She didn't come to us. She kind of went to talk to the locals again. She got back in the car. 
and then she drove off. We didn't really think much about it at the time. And then we went to the, the center of, of Dingras. Uh, our fixer on the ground, um, she had told me that, oh, the mayor's trying to contact me. I have to go and talk to her. She wants to see me. She says it's very urgent. And she came back and she said, I just want to let you know that the mayor told us that uh, we are being watched, that they know that we're here. I was like, who? The crime syndicate. If you go back to where the warehouse is, the mayor said that they can't really protect us. So we kind of quickly wrapped up and then we, we went off. Don't assume that you know what a scam is. They're getting a lot more sophisticated and it's not going to just be someone who's calling with a Chinese accent. It could be someone calling up for a local Singaporean accent the next time and you might be more likely to believe it. Just be more wary. The scammers work with a pretty fixed script. So if your responses is what they are looking for, it gives them an entry into the next line. So ask a lot of questions because they can't be bothered. They cannot answer your questions.